Hi everybody. After a bit of a break, it's time to gear up for the 2024 road cycling season. And we'll do so by presenting a quick breakdown of the 2024 Giro d'Italia stages and what to expect. The Giro will be the first Grand Tour of the season, starting May 4th and good for 21 stages covering over 3000 kilometers and over 45,000 meters of elevation gain. Note that my takes may change during my final Giro preview, at which point we'll know the starting list and early season form of its contenders, allowing me to go into a bit more depth. The 107th edition of the Giro d'Italia gets a grande partenza in Turin. It's a short 136 km stage featuring a flat start, two mellow climbs in the middle section and the second category Colle Maddalena in the finale. The flat start will not favor the brake formation and with a pink jersey on offer, plenty of teams will cooperate to keep the brake in check. It's highly likely that a decisive split will be made on the Colle della Maddalena, where the pure sprinters a la Jacobs or Groenewegen may get into trouble. Then again, these days, most sprinters are on the versatile end of the spectrum, and I expect the versatile guys to survive this climb, or to be able to ride themselves back into contention in the final 20k. The final part of this stage will be a city center circuit, where positioning will be key. Wout van Aert, who's made the Giro a goal, will have this one marked to add a pink jersey to his collection. Stage 2 is a challenging 150k stage, featuring the first summit finish, which rises at 6.2% to the line in the last 11.8 kilometers. The stage is short and should be fairly easy to control, and lots of teams with a climber in their ranks will be ready to ride for the pink jersey, which will be up for grabs. And on a stage like this one, the GC men will also be present at the front and may well be willing to roll their muscles for the first time. I may change my mind on this one as we edge closer to the Giro, yet for now, I'm noting this one for the GC guys. Stage 3 is predominantly flat, yet features a tricky 1.8k 4% average run-up to the finish, which according to the route builders could stand in the way of a fast finisher's showdown. Personally, I don't think the run-in will present much of a challenge for any of the modern-day sprinters. Groves, Van Aert, Pedersen and Milan should all be able to survive this. Also, stage 4 should be fairly easy to control for the sprinters teams, and even though there's a chance for a strong break to form on the sloping start of the stage, I'm going to call it once more for the sprinters. Once again, they'll have to survive some climbs, including the Capo Mele deep in the finale, which also features in Milano Sanremo, a 1.8k short climb at 4.4% average, which frankly should not put into trouble any of the modern day sprinters. On stage 5, a break will form and maybe, very maybe, if one of the sprinters has been dominant on stages 1, 3 and 4, some teams may decide not to take part in the chase, leaving a tiny chance for the break to stay away here. Then again, there's plenty of time to control, so in my book it's going to be the third consecutive stage for fast wheels. The climb of Monte Magno might take a few riders out of contention, but as I've said before, a modern sprinter should survive this. Stage 6 then is a slightly different beast with more classics features. The white road stage, featuring the Vidrita and Bagnaia sections of the Strade Bianchi, and the new section around 15k from the finish, followed by a descent and a 7k sloping drag to the finish. It may go to a versatile sprinter a la Philipse, yet I expect some riders to go bonkers on the grotty section and to stay away for the win. Pitcock style. On stage 7 we're presented with a 37k individual time trial, which is mainly flat, yet climbs towards the finish line. This will be a first proper test for the GC man, the climb to the line is irregular and features some steeper sections. Stage 8 is a 153k demanding Apennine stage and the first one to present the riders with nearly 4000 meters of elevation gain. The final 14k to Prata di Tivo climb at 7% average. It's the first of four five-star stages in the 2024 Giro, which I expect to go to the break. The first 40k provide the brake riders with an ideal terrain to build a nice buffer. The Finnish climb to Prati di Tivo has featured tries in Tirreno Adriatico, with Nibali winning in 2012, Froome in 2013 and Pogacar in 2021. Differences made on this climb were minimal, ranging between 6 and 16 seconds to the number 2 and 10 to 12 riders within the minute on these earlier occasions. On stage 9, we passed the 200k mark for the first time this Giro. 
The start is mainly downhill, followed by a flat middle section and some bumps in the finale. Here, the word is back to the sprinters, marking the end of week one. Week two then starts with a short 141k Apennine stage with the first category mountain top finish. The start to the stage is flat, which will make it difficult for the right brake to form. The most likely scenario for me is for a group of strong riders to break away on the middle section of the stage, upon which they'll move straight into the finish climb to Kusano Mutari. At 18 km the finish climb is long, yet the gradient remains mellow. The way this stage turns out will depend on the gap the brake is getting. Pre-Giro, I'm going to call this one for the brake. Stage 11 runs over 203k, with the last 80k straight and flat, a proper sprint stage. Stage 12 is a 183k hilly sawtooth stage called Stage of the Law Walls by the organizers. The first 50k are pancake flat, yet then we get a succession of 10 more or less demanding ups and downs. These types of stages always go to the break and expect a classic specialist to take this one. There's not much to say about stage 13, it doesn't get any flatter than this one, one for the pure sprinters. Stage 14 is a 31k individual time trial, an average of 55 km per hour is expected given the very fast road configuration in the second half and overall slightly downhill altimetry. Stage 15 is a long 220k mountain stage featuring an unprecedented finish. It's the longest stage of this edition and the second of four five-star stages, basically climbing for the final 55 km while going well above 2000 meters. The Finnish climb to Livigno featured in 2005 and before that in the Maddox days, so we have little reference here. We only know that the Finnish climb sits at the end of a long day and the nasty bit sits towards the end, with a kilometer at 10.2% average and the final few hundred meters climbing at 8.6% average. And even though the stage suits the formation of a strong break, they'll need a big gap before they start climbing to the finish. At this point I'm calling it for the GC man. Week 3 then kicks off with stage 16, an on another 200k plus mountain stage with a hard start allowing for the break to form. The riders will cross the Stelvio, this year Shima Kopi, the highest point of the race. After the town of Artise, the last few kilometers will be a gentle climb leading up to the final wall. Contrary to stage 15, this one has break written all over it. Also stage 17 starts climbing for 9k out of the gate and is a proper mountain sawtooth stage with a first category mountain top finish. Short and very intense with over 4000 meters of elevation gain. It's the third of four five star stages. I'm expecting the GC standings to be quite decisive by now and unless there's an obvious weakness in the race leader the brake has a good chance to make it stick in this one. Stage 18 is another proper sprint stage. Stage 19 should be for the break, and take note people, Felix Gall is from this region, so should he do the Giro, he's the one to watch. Stage 20 is the final chance to overthrow the standings and the terrain is more than suitable to do so, with the riders tackling the 18k 8% Monte Grappa twice, including the option to put contenders under pressure on the descents. Then again, stages with a downhill finish tend to go to the breakaway. For reference, Nibali has won a stage here in 2010 after doing the climb only once, yet also including the descent. On stage 21, we'll get the traditional sprints finale. Overall, we're presented with a Giro that features the toughest stages in terms of climbing towards the end, as you can clearly see from this chart, presenting the cumulative elevation gain per stage. So to summarize, we have two individual time trials, a lot of sprint options, four pure sprints and four versatile sprints, three classic style break stages, four to five mountain break stages and three to four GC days. Thanks for watching and see you soon.